breaking news, FDA issues warning on Ozempic, also known as semi-glutide. I'm Dr. Hassan, board certified. Hi, I'm Dr. Imam, I'm board certified in obesity medicine. So I'm going to try to cl- clarify the FDA warning and compounded semaglutide. I'm not going to recommend you get the compounded version. I'm not going to recommend it for it or against it. I'm just going to try to explain this in detail because I feel there's like a lot of fear mongering with it. Okay, as a general rule that Novo Nordisk owns the patent on Wagovi and Ozempic, meaning that they're the only ones allowed to make the drug protected by law because they put the research in so they get the profits. However, there's a shortage. When there's a shortage, the FDA allows compounding pharmacies to make the drug. And these compounding pharmacies are regulated. They're called 503A and 503B compounding pharmacies, and they're regulated by the board state, the, the state boards of pharmacy. So these aren't like shady companies or like a random pharmacy that's like, oh, now's my chance to make the drug. Like they are regulated as sterile compounding pharmacies. Not every pharmacy can make their own drug. Compounded pharmacies are able to compound drugs for a variety of reasons, for nasal sprays, creams, for injectables, a lot of stuff. Now, there is a shortage of Wagobi and Ozempic. Therefore, these compounding pharmacies this year have been able to compound the medication. When you compound the medication, there's three versions. There's, there's a semaglutide base, which is the same as Wagobi or Ozempic. There's a semaglutide sodium, and there's a semaglutide acetate. When you put the semaglutide sodium or acetate in water, it, it releases from the sodium. It becomes the active ingredient of semaglutide again. Now, the FDA warning was against semaglutide sodium, not all compounding pharmacies and not compounding pharmacies making semaglutide. So I wouldn't really call this a loophole. It's kind of a rule that they're allowed to compound it when there's a shortage of the drug and there's a shortage of the drug. Okay, this is straight from the FDA's website. So you can see up here, can semaglutide be compounded? And yes, when there's a shortage, the drug can be compounded. And as of May 2023, the drug is in shortage. And you can see down here that the FDA is right there, salt forms, which is the semaglutide sodium. Up here, it's talking about purchasing online the, reg- the, the forms of semaglutide from like uns- unsafe vendors. And right here, it's telling prescribers just not to prescribe the version that's in the sodium form. If you're on the compounded medication and you're getting it from a doctor you trust. I'm not trying to tell you to stop it or, or start the compounded version. But in general, no matter what, it's probably going to go away soon, like maybe at the end of this year or next year, because once the shortage ends, these compounding pharmacies will not be able to compound the medication anymore. As long as the shortage is going on and people can't get Wagovi or Ozempic, Um, the compounding pharmacies are going to be allowed to keep compounding it for the time being. Last thing is the FDA approval of medication. Majority of medications that doctors use are off-label use. The medication can do one thing, but they can use it for something else. And that second thing they're using it for, it might not be FDA approved for that purpose. To be FDA approved, you have to have a drug, a standardized dose, and an actual purpose you're trying to get it approved for. For example, metformin, which is used for diabetes, is not really FDA approved for weight loss, but it's used for weight loss all the time. It's not really FDA approved for PCOS, but it's used for PCOS all the time, and it works for those conditions. Ventramine at the dose that they've been using for decades, Ventramine, uh, the dose at pharmacies is like 37.5. That is not the FDA approved dose for Qsema. Even albuterol, albuterol that we use for asthma, we use in infants. It's not FDA approved for infants, um, but it works for infants. Just because something, to get FDA approved, a company has to invest millions of dollars to do the research to prove the patient population that's approved for. And once it goes generic, doctors start using it off-label all the time. So when someone something is not FDA approved, I don't want that to sound automatically super scary because if you try to look at every single drug you're taking indefinitely and look for FDA approvals, then doctors will, will, be, will be stuck to drug companies and not being able to use drugs where they think they work best. Again, I don't own a compounding pharmacy. If you're a pharmacist and if I said anything incorrect about the legality of this, please comment and I'll take this video down. But I'm just trying to clarify that the FDA um, warning was against the sodium version. And as long as there's a, there's a shortage, the compounding pharmacies are gonna keep compounding the medication. And if you're on the compounded drug, it will go away eventually when the shortage ends. Um, hopefully, um, if you can't afford the drug right now, there'll be generic versions of the GLP-1s by next year. Okay, hope that helps. Any questions?